You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, the housebreaking black executive at Nielsen uh, is actually suing them uh, right now for race discrimination. And that is, Nielsen Holdings over the years has reported on the spending power of African Americans. This week, a uh, lawsuit was filed by Cheryl Grace, Nielsen's senior vice president of U.S. Strategic Community Alliances and Consumer Engagement. The lawsuit was filed against the 97 year old global ratings firm in an Illinois federal courtroom. Grace, who has been with Nielsen for 16 years is, and is one of its few black executives or executives of color, said internal conversations and written correspondences about race and career advancement with several of the company's top executives, including its CEO, have led to her being marginalized and subjected to a hostile work environment. Joining me now is her attorney, uh, Linda Friedman. Linda, welcome to Roller Martin Unfiltered. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So first and foremost, um, the basis of her lawsuit, um, that is, uh, were disparaging comments made about her or did, did uh, CEO and other executives simply say uh, she couldn't cut it uh, as an exec? Really, what's the basis of this suit? No, there's never been any allegation that Cheryl Grace has done anything other than an extraordinary job uh, for Nielsen. Uh, the lawsuit involves allegations of a glass ceiling and a pattern and practice of looking to the outside to bring in uh, talent rather than uh, promoting uh, from inside the corporation uh, to the position of executive uh, vice president. Uh, and so uh, the, the, these correspondences, uh, was it her uh, stating that she she wanted uh, further advancement, uh, wanted higher uh, job, job titles and responsibilities and were simply rebuffed? Yes. Um, in the course of employment, uh, there's often opportunities for employees to express interest in advancement uh, through their performance reviews and through conversations with management. Uh, Cheryl also took it a step further by uh, putting together a written proposal for a job uh, opportunity and eventually even wrote to the CEO of Nielsen expressing her interest in advancement uh, and inclusion in the executive rank. Uh, talk about um, uh, that even, even further because, again, when you talk about the, uh, you talk about Nielsen, I mean, Cheryl, first of all, was the one uh, who was uh, over uh, and we really was a public face and, and can, to my understanding, concede this black consumer report, which actually has now opened the door uh, for Nielsen doing reports on other individuals. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, other groups. That's correct. Uh, Cheryl has been a uh, vocal supporter of Nielsen and done extraordinary work in repairing uh, Nielsen's reputation and contributing to public affairs. Uh, consumer outreach campaigns, and has been a celebrated member of uh, the team, uh, just not sufficient to be awarded and recognized for her talent and promoted to executive price, vice president, unfortunately. Um, uh, the video that we're showing right here is actually a video uh, two years ago when Cheryl was on my show um, talking about that Nielsen report uh, of black consumers uh, from consumers to creators. Um, what uh, are y'all seeking in this lawsuit? Cheryl filed the lawsuit, you know, really on behalf of people who can't file the lawsuit. And she's taken the extraordinarily courageous step of bringing a lawsuit as a current employee. Uh, and what she hopes for is reform and change. She started the process by writing a letter uh, to the CEO and asking to open up a dialogue. Uh, during this uh, time in our history, uh, many of the CEOs in corporate America have been reaching out to employees and holding town halls or inviting people to walk through what they refer to as an open door. In Cheryl's case, uh, she accepted the invitation and she hoped to begin a dialogue about how Nielsen could be more inclusive at the top ranks and how other people could be given opportunities. Uh, instead of uh, inviting her to have this discussion, the CEO actually did what many uh, companies do, which is to flip the letter to the human resources and legal department. And then from that point on, Cheryl has never had another conversation with the CEO. But what she really sought to do 
was to provide for advancement opportunities for others who didn't have the ability uh, uh, and um, the opportunity to speak out. Um, and it's been an extraordinarily, extraordinarily courageous act uh, in the middle of a pandemic for a person who has been highly successful to put it all on the line uh, in the hope that we could have reform and change. All right. Linda Friedman, the attorney for Cheryl Grace. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, my panel here. Uh, Scott Bolden. Uh, actually, I'll go to Robert. Robert, we've seen um, more and more of these lawsuits. That was an executive uh, who worked for a Wall Street firm, a black woman, uh, who, uh, Marilyn Booker, who filed her lawsuit as well. I mean, you know, what we are seeing are black executives who before would be scared to death. The fact that, as Linda said, as Cheryl Grace has filed this lawsuit while still working at Nielsen, says a whole lot, Robert Patillo. Well, you're, you're absolutely correct. One of my certification in law school was in the labor and employment law, and part of what employers attempt to do in situations like this, it make you make employees feel as if they should be happy to have the job they have in the first place, particularly in executive leadership, uh, as if you are blessed and they'll use the coronavirus or use unemployment or use whatever it takes uh, to dampen that. And I think it's very courageous to launch this sort of suit, and I hope that it gives other people the, uh, uh, the energy and the belief that they can do the same. And let's understand, we do need to start looking into the past and practices at many of these media organizations because what you see on television is directly attributable to those ratings. So the reason you see very little black news on television is because the Nielsen ratings say that that's not what, uh, not what's not that's not what sells and therefore no advertising dollars go into that and therefore the networks do not put that on television. If we want to change the, de uh, the depiction of African Americans on television, it will come directly through the ratings and having an African American in a position of power to make those decisions, to uh, fact check and to ensure that we're being properly represented has a direct impact on the images that go into our television screen. So we all need to make sure that within our own corporations and jobs that we are doing our best to also root out systemic racism and oppression and glass ceilings as they exist and to um, to root out and make sure we're creating a system by which everyone feels that they have an equal opportunity to prosper and to create the American meritocracy that we're all led to believe exists. Um, this is, uh, again, uh, Lauren, this is the story I was referencing. This is the other story. Go to my iPad, folks. Um, Marilyn Booker, this is from the New York Times. She spent 16 years at Morgan's, as Morgan Stanley's diversity chief. Now she's suing. Marilyn Booker says she was fired in December after she tried to persuade executives to eliminate barriers to success for black financial advisors. I mean, I mean this is the thing uh, that, again, we are we're seeing, and, and frankly, uh, more black executives. At the end of the day, you know what? If, if if folks like that, like 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 Cheryl Grace, don't don't hold these companies accountable, if you're an African American who's in a lower position, they're not going to listen to you. Yeah, that's true. I, I could I'd imagine that you could probably file a t this type of lawsuit at almost any media company, any place, uh, not just financial companies or Nielsen. I mean, just any media company. And because all anyone would, of course, have to do is go through the hiring numbers for the last 10 to 15 years. And what they're likely to find is not too many African-Americans at the top ranks of the company. There are certain media companies, uh, many media companies, that still have never had an African-American person uh, in charge in a position where they are deciding the content of what ends up on the air, which is the real power at these companies. There's a lot of, uh, you know... Uh, a lot of games that get played in terms of hires to make it look as if there's diversity. And what you find that is that the lower ranks, particularly in media companies, you will see uh, African-Americans get hired so that, frankly, so I think I think they do it so that they can stave off a lawsuit. But what you don't find is that the, the upper ranks of the uh, decision-making process is um, is always the same, you know, all the time. And there's certain companies, certain certainly several I've worked at, that were, uh, they were actually getting, in, in two cases, there were lawsuits when I was there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, what they'll do is they'll hire a few people and then they'll just go back to what, what they were doing. But, you know, public embarrassment and lawsuits is really, to me, the only way to go because it never seems to happen with any internal discussion. A lot of these media companies, particularly right now, because we talk about race all the time. I mean, race is in the media all the time. And it's always amazing to me given the history of this country, given the 400-year history of this country, given what we discuss all the time, that media companies never seem to think that it might be a good idea to have some African-Americans around at the editorial board meeting uh, and making some of the decisions with regard to what ends up 
you know, as content for that media organization, but it happens all the time, all the time. Folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one. sister have these amazing uh, VR headsets allows for you to watch their content the virtual reality content uh, right here on the headset you simply pop your phone right into here close it up and then you can we'll put yourself in the room watching their VR content on seek.com or of course content that is on other platforms and so you can check that out they also have uh, these are 4D 360 degree headphones right here uh, with tremendous bass that really distributes the sound all across your head. Uh, get, it's great. You can attach a headphone, um, a headset to it so you can actually use it for gaming uh, and playing with you know, free hands. It's Bluetooth as well. So all of these, get one of these items or you can subscribe to their content at seek.com by going to seek.com using this promo code is RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020. Uh, these, of course, could be some great headphones coming up for birthdays, Christmas, uh, you name it. And so if you want to do that, just go use the promo code right here, RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020, by going to seek.com. And we certainly appreciate them being a partner here with Roland Martin Unfiltered.